Hey guys, how's it going? It is Drake. So, I've never really explored single player games on my channel. I will do in the future, absolutely, but for the most part, people know me for multiplayer games. Valorant, Call of Duty, etc. But my favourite franchise, bar none, is Uncharted. Uncharted 1 came to me in a very peculiar way. Uh, if you guys remember achievements on Xbox, well... PlayStation never used to have trophies, and then one day, Sony thought, hey, we kind of need this to be a thing, it's really important to gamers all over the world, let's introduce trophies. And the first retail game to have trophies retroactively was Uncharted Drake's Fortune. I never played it. I was just a multiplayer gamer at that time. I really never bothered with anything other than multiplayer games, especially Call of Duty. That was all I played. But I decided that I loved achievement hunting. I loved going after Platinums and, and Thousand Gamer Score and stuff like that. And with the idea of like a Platinum Trophy to signify, hey, you've got every single trophy, I was like, this is cool. I want to do this. So I got a pre-owned version of Uncharted Drake's Fortune. And let me tell you, it took me by surprise. Obviously, I'd played single player games before and experienced things growing up, but this was totally different for me. I played through the game entirely on, I think, medium or hard difficulty, but to get the Platinum, you had to play through on crushing difficulty, which was the hardest difficulty. I did it over and over and over again. Got all the trophies by playing through it back on easy and then doing like simpler things like picking up treasures and hidden things, etc, etc. I loved it. Every bit of it was just incredible. And then my brother bought Uncharted 2 a couple of years later, I think it came out in 2009, and I loved it. Among Thieves was one of the best games I played in 2009 or 2008, I can't quite remember at this point. And then obviously Drake's Deception Uncharted 3 that came out in 2011, right around the time Skyrim did. I played every single game, I loved every single game. And that didn't stop me from playing the Nathan Drake collection on PS4, which I platinumed Uncharted 1 and 2 in 9 hours. I played them back to back, I platinumed them both, I immediately, immediately went into Uncharted 3, and I think even to this day, I may be like a trophy or two off getting the platinum. I was super close to doing all of them in under like half a day. It was nuts. I love this game. So Uncharted 4 for me was really the culmination of not only a story, but a personal journey of playing through a story that I felt super attached to. There was long running franchises like Metal Gear and things like that, that I just never really gotten into. But I felt super attached to the characters of Uncharted. Sully, Elena, Nate, etc. Like I just loved them. I loved the world, I loved the globe trotting, I loved the, the adventures and the stories and the little miniature stories within everything. I just thought it was incredible. So today what I want to talk to you about is Uncharted 5. I will briefly go over the ending of Uncharted 4 for those that don't know. Spoilers ahead, obviously. But I want you guys in the comments to tell me, if Uncharted was to return, what does that look like to you? Tell me in the comments below. We always get into discussions, they're always really good. Sometimes I make videos about people's discussions, which has happened once or twice before. It's always really healthy and really enjoyable. I want to know what you guys think. Uncharted 5, PlayStation 5, what does it look like? So at the end of Uncharted 4, Cassie, the daughter of Nate and Elena, discovers all of these wild adventures they used to go on. Clearly they kept their lives completely secret and they moved on from everything. All of these adventures they had that we as players understood and knew. Now, for me, Uncharted 5 looks like this. We play as Cassie. Nate is retired, he's done and dusted, but he does make an appearance in the game. I think that's super important. I think maybe at some point Cassie has to save him or vice versa, but it's really important to me that the story and the narrative of Uncharted 5 plays into something that we as players always ignored and sometimes even joked about. Certain media outlets, I remember like Greg Miller from Kinda Funny, joking about how many thousands of people Nate has killed at this point. Through Uncharted 1, 2, 3, 4, even Golden Abyss, he has killed thousands of people and it's just kind of ignored, right? Now, this takes, to play these types of games, this Indiana Jones style thing, you have to have a certain distance from it, a certain cognitive distance as well. Like, you just need to accept, hey, you're going to be running, gunning, doing things. That's not what you're supposed to pay attention to. But after playing The Last of Us Part 2, 
where you realize that the doctor you kill at the end of Last of Us Part 1 is essentially the entire reason for that game existing. I think it's incredible. The idea that we could do that with Uncharted, the idea that someone could come back into the fold and say, look, I know your father and mother and they, you think they're these great people. You think that they are these globetrotters, these treasure hunters, all of these special stories that they told you that all ended with a nice fairy tale ending. They, they didn't play out like that. That is your perspective, it's your bias, and to have... I, I think this would be unpopular to many people. Nate is one of my favorite characters of all time, but to witness that character being unfolded and maybe a darker side to him, I think it's difficult to appreciate, and I know people felt like this with Joel in The Last of Us Part 2 and the Part 1, but it's, it's something that could be so special and so important. As long as it's handled really well, I think the most important and the most impressive Uncharted 5 story or narrative, however you want to put it, could really be playing as Cassie, going through the game and experiencing this turn, this narrative turn of your father isn't what you think he is. It could be interesting. It might not be. I am not a story writer, but every time I think about Uncharted, I know that I want to play as Cassie. I don't want to play as Nate again. Nate's story is ended. Could you bring him in in an interesting way, you know, it reminds me of Star Wars, right? The, the sequel series where they brought in Harrison Ford to play as Han Solo again in Episode 7. I would like to see something like that happen with Uncharted 5. Cassie is the main person, but now and again you get these little moments with Nate or even Sully, although I imagine Sully would probably be dead at that point. But you get little hints of it in Uncharted 4, like the epilogue. You get little hints of her sneaking around, her being places she shouldn't, hiding things a little bit with a, you know, when Nate and Elena are stood in front of her, like, what have you got back there? Nothing, it's just this, it's that. It's really a story I want to explore. There is one argument I want to dispel before the end of this video, and that is the idea of stopping something entirely. This is something that pops up with all franchises. It happens with Harry Potter, it happened with Star Wars. I remember it happening with Halo in terms of gaming, right? People saying, you should just end it here. It ended fine, it ended well, let's call it a day. And I've always disagreed with that. It's always been something I have just fundamentally moved away from. Because when a world is exceptional, when a world is really, really strong and rich with storytelling, I think it's a good opportunity to tell more stories. And if you've got the right people, you can tell those stories. Sure, some people might not like the new Star Wars films, but without Disney buying it, we wouldn't have got Mandalorian. Without, you know, Harry Potter expanding and becoming the Wizarding World, yeah, sure, some people don't like the new films, but we're getting a great game next year. Like, oh, this year, oh my god, it's the first. Yes, I just realized it is the 1st of January right now. So yeah, we're getting a, a, a Wizarding World game set. Like, we're going to see so many stories. So I think that when it comes to Uncharted, it's not this deep, rich world in the same way. But I think there are story moments, there are, there are poignant little moments that we can take from the characters that we've seen so far and tell these wonderful stories with them that would turn into 10 out of 10 masterpiece games that we expect from Naughty Dog. I'm really, really excited for what comes forward with the Uncharted series. I hope you guys are as well. I want to know what you would do with Uncharted 5. Do you hate my idea? Do you like my idea? I'm really, really curious. Go to the comments below and tell me. Oh my god, it felt so good. So good to make the first video of the year on the first. I love talking about Uncharted. I love the Uncharted series. If you guys do as well, feel free to drop a like on the video. Feel free to subscribe. This year, I'm going to hit a thousand subscribers, if not more. That is the goal. If you'd like to help me out on that journey, it'd be very much appreciated. And I'll see you guys in the next one.